Welcome to section 6 of chapter 1, which is classify polygons. As you can guess, our objective is to classify polygons by their sides and angles. A lot of this should be review. First thing we should probably talk about is what exactly defines a polygon. So a polygon has four major features. The first one is that the figure lies in a plane. All I'm telling you when I said, say that it lies in a plane is that it's two-dimensional. So a polygon is two-dimensional. If it did not lie in one plane, if a polygon lied in multiple planes, it would be three-dimensional, which would make it a solid, not a polygon. Okay, so it lies in a plane. Second thing is a polygon is closed. It's closed. There's no openings. Next, the sides are formed by line segments. So more simply than that, all I'm telling you is that there's no curves. So a polygon has no curves. So a circle is not a polygon because it's curved. Okay, and then the fourth one, this is going to be the long property. Each side intersects exactly two sides. So all I'm telling you with that is that there's no no sides cross. So if your polygon had something like that in it, that's not going to be a polygon. You have two sides that are crossing. So a few more important terms. The vertex is the end point of a side. So if I draw myself a polygon over here, this is going to be a vertex. This is going to be a side. So you probably have heard these before. Now convex and concave. There are formal definitions and less formal definitions. So I'm going to give you my definition, which is not very formal. I'm going to start with concave. A concave figure, I'm going to say, folds in on itself. So convex, then, does not fold in on itself. And let me show you what I mean by folds in. So I have this figure, this would be concave. If you're going to see this part right here, it's as if the figure is folded in, like you pushed it in. Convex would be something like this. No side looks like it was pushed in. Special note about convex and concave, these figures or these terms apply to polygons. So you would not say that a circle is convex or concave because a circle is not a polygon. Um, so in example one, it says determine whether the following figures are convex or concave. I'm going to add on if they are polygons. Okay, so if we look at A, the first thing you can say about A is that it's not a polygon. A is not a polygon, so it can't be convex or concave. Looking at B, is B a polygon? Well, it's two-dimensional, it's closed, it has no curves, and no sides cross. So B, we're going to say, yes, a polygon. Okay, and then is it convex or concave? Well, it doesn't fold in on itself, so we would say that this one is convex. I forgot to mention A is not a polygon because of this side in the middle. So this side here, it connects to one, two, three, four other sides. That can't be um, by the fourth property of a polygon. Fourth property of a polygon says each side intersects two sides. In this case, we have a side that intersects four sides. So that's why A was not a polygon. Right now, 
take a minute, pause the video, and try C and D. Are they polygons, yes or no? Furthermore, are they convex or concave? Only if they are polygons, though. Let's see how we did. For C, you should have gotten not a polygon. Should be able to tell that by the curve. D is yes, a polygon. D is concave. It looks like there's four spots where the figure is pushed in, where it caves in on itself. So D would be a concave polygon. Hopefully you got that one, those right. If you didn't, that's okay. You're going to have an opportunity tomorrow to um, practice a little bit more. Next, we have some words that you need to know. First column is the number of sides. Second column is the word we have. So if the figure has three sides, we call it a triangle. If the figure has four sides, we call it a quadrilateral. Now, there are special types of quadrilaterals that you probably know about, like a rectangle, a square, a rhombus. Those are special types of quadrilaterals. So in general, if a figure has four sides, we call it a quadrilateral. Five sides is a pentagon, six sides is a hexagon. These are the ones that you might not remember. I am going to use these in class, in your homework, on quizzes, and on tests. So please make sure you have all of these terms memorized. And then the one that should probably be new to you is this n-gon. So 12 sides we call it a dodecagon. We don't have words for every single number of sides. So a figure that has 123 sides, we don't have a name for that. We call that a 123-gon. So anything over than 12, really, like 13, we call it a 13-gon, a 14-gon, a 15-gon. So 123-gon means the figure has 123 sides. A 150-gon means a polygon with 150 sides. So keep those terms in the back of your head, but please make sure you do have them memorized for um, the upcoming quiz and for your test. We're going to do some more practice and a few more vocabulary words on the next page. So if you would flip the page, please. Okay, so we've got three more definitions. An equilateral figure is a polygon where all sides are congruent. So a polygon where all the sides are the same length. That should make sense. Equi, that's equal. Lateral is the sides. So equiangular, equi, same. Angular, angles. So equiangular is going to be a polygon where all angles are congruent. And then a regular polygon is convex, so it doesn't fold in on itself. It's equilateral, and it's equiangular. So a regular figure is very, very special. All the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent, and it's convex. So in geometry, we do a lot with regular figures. In the real world, we don't see them as much because they are so special. So in example number two, it says classify by the number of sides and then tell whether the polygon is equilateral, equiangular, or regular. Okay, pay attention to this, classify the polygon by the number of sides. So what I mean by that, I don't mean tell me the number of sides. So for A, I don't mean count that there's six sides and tell me there are six sides. I mean tell me what's the word for that. So a figure with six sides, we call that a hexagon. Every year, students count up the number of sides and tell me a number. I don't want a number, I, mean, I want a word. So classify by number of sides, I want a word. So this is a hexagon. And then next, tell whether the polygon is equilateral, equiangular, or regular. Well, it's definitely equilateral. We can tell all the sides are marked congruent. 
definitely equiangular because the angles are marked congruent. So equilateral and equiangular would, would make this a regular figure. It's also convex. So this is regular. Remember, regular means that it's convex. It's equilateral and it's equiangular. All those have to be true. Okay, B and C I would like you to try. Classify by the number of sides and then tell whether the polygon is equilateral, equiangular, or regular. Pause the video, try these two on your own, and then come back when you are finished and we will go over it. Okay, let's see how we did with B and C. For B, four sides, so this is a quadrilateral. Okay, is it equilateral? Well, the sides are marked differently. It's not equiangular, therefore it can't be regular, so it's just a plain old quadrilateral. For C, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sides. So for C, this should have been called a dodecagon. All of the sides are marked congruent, so this is also equilateral. It appears to be equiangular, except for these angles right here. Um, it's not regular because it's not convex. This figure is concave because it folds in on itself, which is why it's also not equiangular. So for C, you should have gotten an equilateral dodecagon. If that's what you got, great job. If not, I understand this one was tricky, so just remember that for the future. Regular figures have to be convex. we got a few more examples to go, and then you are free and finished with this video. So for example number three, it says the expressions 9x plus 5 and 11x minus 25 represent the measures of two angles of a regular nonagon. Find the measure of one angle of the nonagon. Okay, so we know that we have angles in a regular nonagon. Those are the really important pieces. So we need to review. What does it mean to be regular? Well, it means that the figure is convex. It means that the figure is equilateral. And it means that the figure is equiangular. Okay, now how does that relate to a nonagon and to angles? Well... Equiangular means that all of the angles are going to be congruent. So if I'm given these two angles, they're congruent, they're equal. So I'm going to have 9x plus 5 equals 11x minus 25. So that's what it means to be equiangular. It means my angles are congruent. If my angles are congruent, they're equal, so set them equal. And now I just need to solve this equation. So I'm going to start by adding 25. So I get 9x plus 30 equals 11x. I'm going to rewrite that. So 9x plus 30 equals 11x. If I subtract 9x from both sides, I get 30 equals 11 minus 9 is going to be 2x. 30 equals 2x. I divide by 2 and I get x equals 15. Now I need to remember this is not the question. The question says find the measure of one of the angles. So, I still need to substitute that back in. So if I do 9 times 15 and I add 5, I get 140 degrees. So one angle is 140. Now you're probably thinking, well, why did I pick 9x plus 5? Well, let's try the 11x minus 25. If I do 11 times 15 and I subtract 25, I also get 140. Okay. So is that coincidence, or should that have happened? Well, let's remember that our figure is equiangular, so all of the angles should be equal. So if I know that one angle is 140 degrees, that means all of the angles are going to be 140 degrees. So that was example three. Example four is yours to do on your own. So right now, pause the video and try example four on your own, please. 
please make sure that you show work. When you are finished, come back and we will go over it together. Okay, let's see how we did. So, reading the problem, it says the expressions x squared plus x and x squared plus 4 represent the sides of a regular quadrilateral. Find the value of x. Okay, again regular, we wrote it above. It's convex, it's equilateral, it's equiangular. So, equilateral, all the sides are going to be congruent. So I can do x squared plus x equals x squared plus 4. My sides are congruent. My sides are equal. So I can set them equal. Now, initially, this looks pretty bad. Looks like it's going to be difficult. Um, so the first thing I want to do is try to get those x squareds together. So if I subtract x squared, on the left side cancels, the right side cancels, I get x equals 4. So not as bad as we thought it was going to be. And, and that was the whole problem, x equals 4. Okay, so that was the video. I want to return to our initial objective, which was to classify by sides and angles. So classifying by sides, that, that's saying the figure is a triangle, it's a pentagon, it's an octagon. Classifying by angles, that's saying the figure is equiangular, the figure is regular, etc. You have one problem to do on your own before tomorrow. It says the following triangle is regular. Find the value of x. Okay, so the regular part is the part that's really, really important. So make sure you look back at what does it mean for a polygon to be regular, and then try this problem. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure you have all the notes written down, all the work, and that this problem is completed. If you get the wrong answer, that's fine, but I at least want to see that you attempted it. If you have any questions, please make sure you star, bold them, um, make a mark by them so that you know to ask me tomorrow. And I will answer any questions we have tomorrow. See you tomorrow.